Final chapter of Quest is Marats. The Marats dispels. As the girls got accustomed to their new surroundings, they began to look around. Where are we? Das asked. Marats is strong, though. That's why I turned towards he heard the words Engie and looked at Marats. And that's Marats! An angry growl heard from where they were thrust. He said those words. Oh! Seems like a big pig cat! Piggy said. Well, he had the woman up and down. Okay. So you're Mirage. Good to find him, like you. Applejack said, lower your head to charge. I have a few words I want to share. I swear to Celestia, what is up with me giving all the Avenger lights to Applejack? Then he put it up to her chin. You know, I can't say much for her personality, but her facet sense is atrocious. Heavens. When you're also trying, I'll kill us and not. Tracy stood on trembling legs as flesh I walked to her. Are you okay? Turksy is doing. A small grunt of pain escaped her lips as she stumbled. Great! Never better. Hearing the tongue of her friends, feeling your spirits with her, seeing the stand with her, somehow lifted up Twilight's spirit. Let's go, Mirage! We won your stupid game. Mirage chuckled as he waggled her finger at Twilight. Uh, uh, uh. I never said I would let you go if you won the game, my pet. Mirage smiles and leaned over and touched Twilight's chin. As you recall, I said maybe. As in, there was a very likely chance I'm going to play a new game with you. What you doing? Rainbow Dash yelled as he turned to charge Mirage. I was held back by Applejack. <laughs> Place is there, Super Cube. Apple's next time in low tone. Let's let the gas break. Then you can bug her in the face. Smirk went across Applejack's face as he said this. As the words hit Rainbow Dash's ears, she nodded in approval. I have been doing some thinking, you see. And I came to the closing. Rod says he watched before the seven mares. Turning her head around fiercely, she pointed to call at Twilight. The only reason why you got out of my nightmare was because that little blue maiden snuck in and interfered. Interfered? But Terenshi- ah! She got a painful yell as he was slashed by Barras' claws. Five big red gases clearing Tracy's right side, sending her flying across the wall into the room. She slowly raised her head to get attempt to get back up, but then fell back down as her eyes slowly closed. Tracy! The girl yelled in unison. Flashlight flew over where Tracy laid, leaning the big gases along Tracy's side. Blood slowly sliding down the loose. Softly, the young mare put a hoof down the unicorn's throat. It's okay. She's still breathing. She sighed in relief that the wounds were not as deep as they seemed. Rainbow turned, her eyes narrowing in determination while Applejack put her stetson down over her eyes. Tracy began to reach behind her as the unicorns flared up their magic. Oh, this was back when I used to say things like it's fight time and put things in parentheses when I wanted to do the song Q. Except now when I do hyperlinks. Yes. Hyperlinks, rappers! The song for today is Cinderella. You can either use the original version or the cover by Cheetah Girls. Oh, how I loathe to be interrupted. Marat says she turned around and walked away slowly. Now, as I was saying, she turned to face the six mares. My new game is this. I'm putting you back into your little cells. Only this time, I'm going to send you so far apart that even if you free yourselves, it'll take too long for you to save anyone. And no one- oh! See, Lionel Grant's rainbow dance flew straight her stomach. It was driving themselves deeper to her abdomen. Her chin was set slightly with a right hoof on the blue pegasus. Yeah, here are two reasons why that ain't happening. Me? Death snows her head over her shoulder, pointing to her friends behind her. And then. It stinks, doesn't it? Emma's ass said when smirk, she flew away from Ross's claws. A smile on lips, Ross raised her claws to create a fireball. However, this was interrupted by a rope lassoing around her neck. Turning her head to look, he said the rope, she growled at the sight of Applejack. Holding her up faster than teeth. 
burying her face. Roz grabbed Apple Jack's lasso and pulled the orange pony towards her, dragging her through the air. As he out with her left claw, she cut an Apple Jack's hind hoof. Apple Jack rolled to the ground in pain, but got a few seconds later shook off the wound. Um, excuse me. Butterfly says she flew from her eyes. I just want to let you know that I'm a distraction. She said, just barely flying out of Mirage's swipe. As the little pigasus flew away, Mirage got a good look at Rarity, who had two large gems for her magic. But regret, Rarity sent the two large gems flying towards Mirage, rolling it loud for the environment to dodge, but get hit in the head with the other. Rarity gets thrown under her nose. She wipes some of the blood off. Roar, she produced a massive wave of flame and lost at Rarity, only to watch the part of it get blocked by a shield from twilight. The rest was fed into a very large bazooka that pinky and brought out. While Dash ran to her host along Mariah's head and bobbed out of the way of some of her slashes, Pinkie Pot ate, ate her bazooka at her foe. Others arching her eyebrows into a weapon. As Mariah's cut her rainbow shoulder, sending her crane to the floor, she turned to see Pinkie fire her bazooka in Mariah's. She let out a painful yell as scalding hot pie filling covered her. Conducting the electricity between her fingers, she lost the lightning bolt of Pinkie, going right through the pink pony. She arched an eyebrow. She heard a loud, SURPRISE! It was kicked in the back for Pinky. Granty, she turned the slice across her chest, sending Pinky across the floor, bleeding. Charging an arrow lightning bolt in her left hand, she threw it towards Pinkie Pie, while Rainbow dropped the apple jack into Mars's back onto a target that Pinky had put onto it. Twice set the front of Pinky and sword the lightning bolt with her magic. Sent the lightning bolt straight back to Mars, hitting her as she slashed the apple jack's side, cutting into the back and throwing Rainbow against the wall. The body covered in scorch marks. She raised her hands to Jerry, three lightning bolts, and threw them at the ponies in front of her. Gracefully, Twilight and Rarity grabbed the lightning bolt with their magic and redirected back at Mirage. Rainbow slowly got up and bucked the third lightning bolt into the ceiling. Flutterside came up quickly behind Mirage, slightly tapped on her back. Jerry around, she tried to attack the mere Pegasus. Only to keep missing as she began to get spun around. She managed to cut Flutterside's back and sitting here flying to the ground. She went to see Twilight flaring up her horn. Even her and Mirage, Twilight lit up a rods of fireballs and magic bolts from Mirage. You see a sealed, all but one was blocked. The magic bolt hit the feline square in the chest, making her stumble back. Warrior and Ray, she caused the entire floor to rumble and break apart, sending the breeze everywhere. It's over! She snows to begin to laugh at victory. The laugh was short lived as she watched the breeze clear to reveal a white unicorn, holding several large walks through her magic. Though several cuts, scratches, and gases adorned her body, she was still a dark, sandy with a determined look in her eyes. Smirking, she held the rocks in the air as Applejack, her front left hoof broken, once it reached the rock that was held fast, began to launch rapidly with her heart and legs at Mirage. Twice stood next as she began to fire bolt at the fold of Mirage, while Piggy was next to her, placed trembling as he threw fiery cannon balls at Mirage, while her shining rainbow jazz. Though both had deep wounds on their sides, cut Tracy before she fell, and put herself in safety. Fly back to rejoin the prey. So Ross got prompted by her attacks. See, that was a fierce growl. You fools! Why do you keep fighting? Ross said a bit. Her calm voice that filled with rage. Haven't my nightmares taught you fight anything? Those ideals. Those virtues. You hold yourselves to are nothing more than weak faith that you break easily. Again, this is me taking certain reviewers who complain that the main six are not perfect personifications of their elements, bowling up into a ball, setting on a fire, and kicking it into the dumpster. I'm telling you that the main six are not to be flatterized. And that they have one personality that just to be the pure elements. And here's the main sex to tell you why. Odyssey will deny the truth of forever. Loyalty has a selfish desire. Laughter breaks to tears. Generosity can be green. Magic will fade. And kindness is probably the greatest lie any creature could come up with. You're all just pathetic creatures holding onto false ideals. The arm is pretty very, very poorly for bears. You just don't get it all, do you? Twilight said, smiling as a golden tiara adorned her head, a star-shaped jewel on top of it. An element? But how? Ross turned her head to look at the fallen Trixie. 
Let's raise your head up a little. St stupid mirage. Can't even recognize an illusion when she sees one. Trissy chuckled in pain. She smirked. Turks! And he had to yell at this with her the whole time. Each time she talked and came close to one of the bearers, Trissy would put one of the elements onto the bearers, coated in an invisibility spell, of course. Trissy just fooled the mirage with her mirage! Ha! She then rested her pet back down as so loose spells began to fade. Before Mirage could swipe at Tracy, Death slammed her host against her stomach to send her back against the throne. Like Twilight said, the elements didn't just choose us. We earned them by proving ourselves. Light sparked on Rainbow's neck as the necklace of a red lightning bolt appeared. So what if we ain't showing off our elements perfectly? Twilight for saving. Applejack says a similar necklace appeared on her neck with an apple jewel. No penalty is perfect. Then he slammed a pie into Mirage's face as he skipped to her friends. And besides, being perfect is fun! All you do when you are perfect is to sit around and cheer all day, hold your cup of cider while a piece of broccoli's around your neck. Piggy smiled as the necklace bearing a blue balloon jewel saw on her neck. I'm feeling it! As much as I hate to agree, they're right. No penalty is perfect. But on the other hand, a purple diamond shield on peanut on her necklace around her neck. He wants a perfect pony anyway, she says as she slammed a rocket mirage. Which, now that I think about it, was also something they put on that whole entire commentary on uh, bad fans that they did. Only mine's more epic. It has a lot more battles. And it's better told. Because mine's not a comedy! <laughs> Making sure that Trixie's okay. Fireside flew to her friends. We can only try our best to demonstrate what our elements are, or are meant to represent. Fireside went to her friends. Nickel's appearing on her neck. The pink butterfly jewel appearing. Right? And maybe, behind the scenes, you need that element of trust to bind them. Trixie thought to herself as we began to lose consciousness. And you know, that's why we are the perfect bearers of the elements. That's why I said, feeling the energy of the elements flowing through her body, connecting her to her friends. Because we represent both sides of the elements. All of the good and the bad. Yeah, we have our faults. Except for me. Dads begin to float in the air. Well, in the end, we show that you don't have to be perfect to be a good ponies. Applejack said, hovering. But despite our faults, our fears and our nightmares. And he says he began to glow. We'll always be there to support one another, to care for another, to comfort each other. No point can survive being just one element. The others need to be there too. Just so we can help put each other up when they are broken. Firstly he says her hair lifted up with the rainbow's energy. Wow. This gets explored later back in fall. Woo! After all, Pinky smiled. That's what friends do, right? Here smiled at Pinky. None could disagree with her as they were eclipsed by the rainbow's brilliant light. Looking up, a brilliant band of energy from the six mirrors. The rainbow light flew towards the cat lady. Her eyes opened in her heart as she began to crawl away. No, no, I can't go back! She screamed as the rainbow band had circled her, holding her down as the brilliance around, causing the world around her to shatter. It was a few hours before the mares felt like standing up once more. You know, the least that these dying elements could do for us was to heal all our wounds when they used them. I was actually, it says she stood up, fearing her leg. Don't worry, Twilight said, walking to the Trixie up, where Magic stared down with the others. I can heal some of the lion wounds before we go home. Yeah? Hi, out. Twilight pointed her home towards an open portal, showing Twilight Bill. That way. I noticed it before the fight began. She did turn her head to see some hieroglyphs. Hmm. I wonder. Where's Mirage? Verity asked. Remembering the last two times she used the elements, something remained of their opponent. Girls, look. Leslie said, pointing where Mirage once stood. In the place of the environment of evil was now a tan mare with long black hair and tail. On her flank was an odd mark, slightly skewered by her pigs' wing and red dress. 
Oh my basset. She said, let you get for hers. I I'm free. I I'm me again. I'm whole. Thank you so much, brave Fitmares, for saving me, she said. The smile on her face just began to fade away at Clyce's sparkles. Playing up into the darkness of the void, the girls watched as the ghostly young man ran to the hose of a much older stallion, hugging him. I'm home. I welcome you back, my dear one. The old stallion said, covering his eyes. What the high? Alps, I guess. Look at the scene. Tears flying from Pinky's eyes. What did you see above? Oh, I'm so happy for you! There you are. That was a mirage. Twice says you read the higher ghost before her. Seems like eons ago, that Philly made some sort of wish with a gin. You mean gin, right? Rainbow Dash said. No, gin, Twice said, looking over her shoulder at Dash. Gins will grant your wish, but corrupt it, like he did with her. Apparently, she wanted the ability to spread kindness over her hometown and help dispel a lot of darkness that was in it. However, the Jin corrupted it, making it so she could see all the evil and horrible things people did to each other. This drove her mad to the point where she wanted to destroy everyone on her own, saying all hopes would be destroyed if it really never existed. The thing they were to be on saving. They should suffer instead. The main five not in understanding as they looked back at the portal. Girls, let's head home. All of us. Oh, uh, by the way, a little retcon from me here. That's Jen. That was Maleficent. And that human thing was only holding Mira the real Mirage back. Tri Epilogue. So she stood in front of a large cloud. Also, she used to continue to heckle her. <laughs> Get off the stairs, you freak! This is always the worst part of the nightmare, hearing those calls. She hated the fact that she knew there was a small bit of truth to each insult. There was nothing she could say against it. Her mouth was sealed. Hey! Rainbow Maid faces yelled, Shut up the letter to your show! Let me tell you stories he's telling. Yeah, shut up! That was next ten. Come on, Sugar. We'll keep the jerks from, down from here. Yeah, he got a show. A really awesome one. The biggest ones with special effects. Group and team nice. You need a really cool lizard where you disappeared and sassy of friendship. Then he says he sets up and down. Oh, don't mind me, Rarity. Look how it gets those facts for everybody. Marcy says he walked off, but not before staring down some of the hecklers. Oh, darling, I do hope the two of you have an excellent show together. Rarity says he helps sleep the hecklers away. Let me only to stay in full of fans. Two of us. But Tracy didn't put her hope over her mouth in shock. And speaking as he turned to see a purple unicorn wearing somewhere with just his hand cape. Come on, Trixie! Let's see what Celestia's prize student and the great solutionists can do together! Twice said with a smile on her face. A smart appeared on Trixie's face as she stood back to back with Twilight. Yes, let's. Presenting one and all to the greatest smell in Ecclesia, the great and powerful Trixie, aided by the great and powerful Twilight. So I see her, she held up her hope along with Trixie as her dream world shattered. Trixie slowly opened her eyes with a few blinks, trying to get a clue where she was. Seeing up a little, she was in pain at a size for the cuts of the bell. Looking around, she saw she was in a bed, sitting upstairs on a very large tree. As she looked to her left, she could hear a voice. Spike, could you put the new books in the proper spots? I need to check up on- Tracy, you're awake! Twice, exclaimed she ran to Tracy, give me a hug. You, the Turks, you stay here, in your house. Tracy asked, looking at Twilight. Twilight let go of Tracy for a moment. Yeah. We tried to figure out the best place to let you rest from your injuries. We couldn't let you to Applejack's house because <laughs> Apple Bloom, it wouldn't be quite quiet. The same went for Rarity. Marcia had too many animals that I think Angel wanted you dead. Piggy Pie had the twins at her place, and you can't walk on clouds, so I was the only one left. So I smiled, Strixie shrugged her head. <laughs> Come on, let's get to Sugar Cube Corner and let everybody know you're awake. As they walked down these stairs, a small purple dragon walked to the bottom step. Hey, Twilight! Said, is it evils and you be placed under the... He looked up at Tracy and Twilight. 
Quick, she's awake! Let me know if you get some- Before he could fist, he was caught by Twilight. Wrapped her hose tightly around Spike, not going in low for a moment. Again, Twilight? Not that much, but you need to stop doing that every time you see me. Twilight chuckled as he let her little brother go, then went to walk out the door with Trixie. Every time you see him, Trixie asked, walking with Twilight out the door. Yeah, Twilight sighed. The nightmares are still affecting us a little. Barry keeps on taking on sleep out to make sure she's okay. Dad keeps reminding us how much we mean to her. First, I spends a little extra time with us. Piggy's just a little extra pinky lately, and Applesack has been working extra hard lately. Twilight looked at Trixie. It's kind of like this at the Discord. He has said it's most horrible and hurt us badly. We all had to take the time to work through the pain he put us through. But we got through it together. Like we'll get through this. Twilight said, smile as he led Trixie to the door so he could corner and open it. Say praise! Piggy Elsie left back up from the door. Somebody in the main room sleep back on the side that said, Happy waking him up from a deep sleep party across it. Well, like, how does he know Turks he was? Trixie began to ask as she looked around the room to see Fluttershy, Rainbow to ask Rarity, and Applejack sitting around the place. Well, at first I had a looking eye, and I thought that may have meant when Nona was having puppies. Wow. The whole entire story about that year is after this story. Then my eyes started to bounce. That couple could only met a dear friend was awake up from a very long nap. Then he said a smile as he gave Trixie a muffin. Late. How do you... I put a hoof onto Trixie's shoulder and smiled. It's best not to question Piggy by logic. You know, my teacher is going to be very interesting in all this. Tracy said, eating her muffin. I was like drinking a little of our mugs and went to Trixie. You may have seen your master before. Can we actually make him one of these things? Because I'm interested in who picked you up as a pro Of course, Trixie will say who it is. Trixie's master is none other than... Before she could finish her announcement, the doors of the car opened wide to reveal two dark gray ponies dressed in armor, with bat wings giving them an air of mess. Her royal majesty, princess of the night, Luna Nixonas! Or I said the right guard, his eye passed covering one eye. Through the door stepped in a blue alicorn, a starry, ethereal mane flowed behind her head as she looked around the room at the bowing ponies. Student! I trust you have a report for us. And thus begins my long-standing tradition of having Celestia and Luna have the biggest roles of popping up at the end of the story! Jesse stood up in a bowing position, ran up to Luna. Then I once more before saluting. Tersi would like to say that her first mission was a complete success. She was able to get into the void with the element to her side. Was able to free each element bearer as he expected, Master. Does he again bow? Granted, it was a little easier when you helped free Twilight Sparkle first. Twice eyes opened wide in shock. Wait, that blue cat was you, Princess Luna? Yes, Twilight Sparkle. <coughs> you had a feeling some dark force decided to trespass into our dream realm. When we had seen that it had come to you and your friends, we sent our personal suit to go and save you five. Well, we used our master to help you break free from your epistemic. Wait a sec. Dad's asked why you have to learn. How did you pick her as a student? Why? Please, Master. I want to urge you to tell her story. Tracy asked. A plain look in her eyes. As Luna nodded, Tracy turned to the eyes before her. About a month ago, after the Ponyville incident, Tracy had just begun to get her show back up and running. What performance? Near the end. A blue unicorn named Moonstone and asked the Trixie to tell the tale of T-Rex. This was one of Trixie's favorites to tell, of course, so she began. That night was one of the best shows Trixie had ever put on. She got impressed the little alcohol. Later on that night, as Trixie was counting at the box office, Moonstone came in. Trixie was surprised to clerks. After all, she had locked the door. And as to why she had appeared in Trixie's room, she said she had an offer to ask a Trixie, that is, when she transformed into the princess. Yes, you thought that we were going to kill you when you stood after what happened with the Alicorn Amulet. Yes, you had to forget, Tracy, Master. 
Master told Trixie that she was not there for the execution, but for a request. It seems that Luna had wanted her own night school to run, much like Celestia's day school for unicorns. Celestia had agreed to let Luna set one up, a look at this to demonstrate how she teaches one stoop before it takes on an entire school of children. So, she bit me after seeing the show. As for why, well, Master was impressed with Trixie's talent for illusion magic, but she wanted to see what else the great and powerful Trixie could do was his talents and illusions. As they were surprised when Trixie demonstrated control for her dream magic and her skills with those spells. Since then, Trixie has been trained hard, not only in her show, but as Luna's apprentice. We see that our faith has not been misplaced. Not only did you prove yourself well with the CV of the bells, but you made some great friends. Luna leaned in and asked Trixie, don't lose them. They'll be very important for you later on in life. We'll take our leave now. You mainly arrived here to check out the well-being of our student and her friends. You see, we expect the full report of the mission upon your arrival and count it off for five days from now. Understood? Trixie saw Luna was as Luna walked out the door. Friends, huh? Trixie could get used to that. She smiled as the music began to play. Thinking by a for choice, the music began to play. Oh, I love this song! She exclaimed as she grabbed her friends together. <laughs> One, two, three, four! We may not be related, but the bonds we've created are strong enough to call family when we're traveling the land. Ready, freezes, calls aside, so she goes over to groups, he called the second family. No matter what they've been through. Even when the sun has faded, we will always stand. You see, we're more than just friends, we are family. Twilight looked to her dear friends, remembering everything they had been through, and the adventures they had gone through, and all the good times. Go ahead and look around, everywhere in Equestria. I doubt sincerely you find a group that's a mess for ours. Pinkie Pie looked around, thinking of all the laughs they had together, and every joke they shared. We can be a bit silly, but with friends, that's the best time. Applejack looked around, remembering all the times they can be stupid, but held by the close bonds they shared. We're gay, safe, we don't use it, we just do what feels right. First, I think back to the times we've been through. Let's say to each other. Sometimes I get scared and dangerous near. Let's together survive. Rima Dad strikes her side before joining her voice. Everything's an adventure and fun for your mind. Risking our lives on a daily basis, but together we're always standing. No, maybe being friends with them. Wouldn't be too bad. So she jumped in. We're the best in all early questions, yeah. We never back down because we're stronger together. And now, the main seven. We may not be related, but the bonds we created are more than enough for family. When the sun is fading, we all be higher, more than friends we are, family. They did it ended together. In a group hug. <laughs> Somewhere in the darkest areas of the void, a blue cat with wings flew in, landed next to a black mist. Well, now haven't we lost big time? Your hosts, the bearers, and your favorite pastime. Of course, I knew you couldn't take them. I mean, after all, who could happen to me? Miss growled, Shut up, Chaos! You two had to farm it. This one annoys me. Fine, fine. Said Cassie, slowly morphed into a tall, snake like figure with this bad animal parts. I prefer my Discord form anyway. There, that wasn't so hard now, was it? Discord smiled, his red eyes glowing. Of course not. Now, what are you going to do? Not some boring revenge scheme, I hope. Oh, no, no, the miss said. For now, I'll rest. Let them have their bits of hope. And then, one day... <laughs> the end. 
this fic, I gotta admit, this is one of those things that I just remember being the start of so many epics I've pulled off. And what I find interesting is that some of the themes like who these characters really are, their emotions, their past, and their stories are all touched upon later on in fall. And I also find interesting how I was actually able to take a good time to look into some of the other characters' developments. One reviewer said that I actually looked into what the main six's real fears are. And they're kind of right. I did. But that's because that's how you can really establish and see what the characters are like. By looking deep into their souls and figuring out what haunts them at night. And that's what I like to pull it off. When I look at the story, I see a lot of things that have slowly changed and grown over time. My style of fights have become bigger than ever, while showing off how each one of the team can actually handle themselves. Or how I was able to translate the music better and change the um, music into something more. Or use hyperlinks better. I also noticed that how I've been able to establish my characters a lot better. It does rely on what the audience knows. That sort of thing, you know? This story brings me a lot of good memories, and I'm glad to have reread for all of you. Next time, maybe the sequel. Or we go back even further. <laughs> See you next time.